Get started in just one minute. Just me and Melody McAllister. Okay, it is 10 o'clock, which means that we are going to start and hopefully we'll get people coming in throughout the hour and we'll all get to explore some collaborative practice together. One of the things I was thinking about as I was creating this session is how could I make a conversation about collaboration more collaborative? So the more people that are in here, the more people participating, I think the more exciting it will be going to try to model what collaborative practice might look like in a classroom as we are all gearing up to either a full online teaching in the fall or maybe some sort of hybrid. But either way, there's got to be this strong online component uh, for just many reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is, is that it works. And it might not be ideal, but I think as we all get comfortable with this, we'll figure out ways to blend the two into a, a real a, a real blended learning experience. So let's get started. My name is Michael Cohen. I'm the tech rabbi and I am a director of innovation at Boys High School in Los Angeles. I am in charge of the entrepreneurship program as well as overseeing the STEAM and innovation program at the school. I'm also blessed to be able to work and collaborate and connect with educators like you. Although I miss the in-person experiences because those that's that's my jam, is connecting with people. So we're gonna have to do it remotely here. But one of the things that I'm really excited to discuss today is, is the, the power of collaboration with Microsoft tools. We're gonna focus on a couple different tools throughout the next hour. But before we start, please share in the chat where you're from, what do you teach, and if you are a Microsoft school. You can also scan this QR code and it will get you connected with me and my resources, and it'll set you up to receive the occasional email, which I promise I won't overburden you with. So where are you all from, and what do you teach, and if you're a Microsoft school? Cool. All right, we got like a, we got an international audience here. That's cool. We got Alaska. We got Kuwait. That's cool. All right. Well, we'll get back to that QR code if you need to scan it later. So here's some of the questions that I want to set the tone for the next hour. Uh, the first is what type of collaboration has been successful in the past? One of the things that I have always sort of grappled with is how do we go about authentically integrating technology into the classroom? So is it because we want technology to enhance some sort of pedagogical practice or some sort of experience? And the other side is this technology does something amazing. How do I bring that amazing experience into my classroom? So before we get into the tech and what the tech can do, what types of collaboration have been successful in the past? So there's a couple ways that we could go about this right now, because technically what I'm asking you to do is, is sort of planting the seeds of collaborating together. Imagine that you're a teacher in your classroom and you're trying to 
engage your students. You're trying to get them to be participants in the learning. You're trying to get them to contribute and add value by sharing their insights. In a classroom, whatever the setup looks like, you have students and you're there and everyone's there face to face. You can read people's body language. You can observe how people are engaged, not engaged, and you can choose to figure out different ways to collaborate together. It's very different when you then flip into the digital realm. So one of the things that I thought about is how could we do that brainstorm? How could we share that so that the ideas aren't lost, so that we could go back to it? And there's a couple of really cool platforms. One of them is called Mural. And actually, I really enjoy Mural because it's a, it's a brainstorming canvas. Let's you put like digital post-it notes. And I was thinking, and I had shared this in one of my earlier sessions around uh, Microsoft Teams. I'm gonna drop the URL for Mural in, uh, in the chat. You should definitely check it out. Free for educators. You just have to prove that you're an educator. So I use Mural a lot. I really love it. But there's ways that you could use PowerPoint. And I was thinking, well, what if, what if we came up with a, a cool way to sort of collaborate in that space and brainstorm? And what I want to do is uh, I want to share that link with you. So in the chat right now, because there's a lot of different ways that we could go about this. There's collaboration in teams through conversations. You don't yet have breakout rooms in teams, but you could create a channel, a couple channels. And I have in, in my business and uh, cre uh, creativity and business innovation course that's focused around entrepreneurship. So in that course, I have different in, in, the, in the team channels, I have three breakout rooms where students can go in and they can set up a video conference that'll be self-contained or they can just interact with chat. And then I can go in and I can interface and I can interact with the, with the, with the group that's happening in, the, in that channel because I'm the owner of, of the entire team. So that's something that's nice to have the students navigate around there. But what, what's, what's, what's happening here, and I see there are a couple of people getting into this presentation, is you can preset a bunch of different post-its, so to speak. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch. I'm, gonna, I'm sharing right now. I'm going to share um, this screen here so we can all see where we're at. Hold on. I've lost my team. Where's my team? Well, the video is has disappeared. Oh, wait, here it is. Okay. So you're 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 collaborating in here, and you can double click on these, and you can preset them, right? And so instead of originally, I thought, oh, I. I'd set it up in a way where you would you would have to add your own. It depends on the grade level. If you preset it, it could work for um, could work for younger younger students in it. And Hey everyone. Cool. I've never been thrown out of my own teams before. That was exciting. Well, at least it's still recording. Okay. <laughs> so back to where we were before I got thrown out of my teams. And if you have any questions during um, the session, please ask in the chat. I definitely enjoy the, the connection uh, and the conversation there. 
Um, so if you can get into this, let me just share the link again for those that have uh, had joined after I sent the link. So you can get into this and I'm just asking a question. So I actually want you to, I want you to actually add something here. I'm not just in theory sharing this with you. What are types of collaborative activities that you can think of? For, forget tech for a second. What are ways that students can work together, that they can connect, that they can learn from each other, that they can support each other, right? Collaboration, cooperation, right? There, it's, a, it's a broad term, but there's a lot of potential. So I'm seeing people, and this is this is fun because it's you know it's live, and you know for for those that spent a lot of time in the Google land where you know live collaboration, you know Google was it. It's refreshing that you have a Microsoft alternative for schools that are Microsoft schools, but it's not enough for it to just be live collaboration. It's like what are we doing with the live collaboration? What are we doing? to set expectations where if I was modeling this for my students, I would say each one of you needs to have two post-its shared to answer the guiding question, answer the essential question, whatever type of question we're asking. And you have to add your initials. Or if the students don't feel comfortable sharing their thoughts, you could have like a code, a number scheme. There's a lot of creative ways that you could go about that. One of the things that students will thrive as long as you're engaging them and you're setting expectations. If you're setting up a lecture for 20, 30 minutes, they're disengaged. It doesn't matter who you are. They're not, they're not engaging with that unless you're playing video games, right? They'll watch a Twitch stream for like an hour and a half. But unless, unless you're playing video games, you, you, can't, you can't lecture for, for more, than, more than 10 minutes. I think five minutes, break it up, five minutes talk, five minute activity, 10 minute activity, five minute talk, however you go about it. But you set up that opportunity for students to be engaged and interface and, and, and contribute with accountability. And they're gonna be part of it and they're gonna do it. So as we're, uh, we're going through here, I'll check back in this in, uh, in just a second. I'm gonna hop back into the, uh, into the presentation. The next question is, what types of collaboration are possible with Teams, with PowerPoint, and with OneNote? And you know, it's 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 someone someone messaged in in the chat. So they said, I, I have not used PowerPoint in a long, long time, and I'm gonna have to check it out again. So I have a couple other sessions that I, I've already I've already presented, and they're on demand on the Q on Q's YouTube channel. But I also I'll be doing some repeats because I never I never do the same session twice. There's always going to be things I've learned or great insights from participants that I then worked into my presentation because we're all learning. We're all learners. We're all learning here. So PowerPoint, as I was preparing one of my sessions on PowerPoint, I found a presentation from 2011. When I had first started working at this K-8 school, they had a computer lab with Windows machines. I remember the, uh, the Dell Optiplex series. That, that name Optiplex will forever be etched in my mind. And it was how to present and how to create amazing presentations using PowerPoint. This is 2011. And I looked at it, I kind of chuckled because uh, I'd like to hope I've become a better designer since 2011. But it was so interesting because one of the, one of the one of the people at Microsoft, Mike Thompson, he shared this tweet. If you, the last time you used PowerPoint was 2011, you need to check out PowerPoint because 20, 2020 PowerPoint is not the same. And it isn't. And I'm not going to focus too much on that because I, we're running um, something a little bit more focused on collaboration. But slide designer, presentation coach, live sub uh, li live um, subtitles with translation like absolutely mind blown totally crazy awesome insane so collaborative ways that i see teams so teams is awesome teams is the collaboration engine of 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 the microsoft suite and i'm going to i'm going to open up here the um, i'm going to open up teams 
So I always forget, like, I, I want to show you teams, but we're in a team and I can't screen record. Um, I can't screen. Actually, no, you know what? I, I can. Hold on. I'm going to screen record. Or not screen record. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my second screen here. Awesome. Okay. So you can see that. So this is this is my teams and you know, teams is kind of weird. I wish I could create a team and all of you could come in and we could all collaborate together And here. Uh, it doesn't actually uh, work that way because there is a security component of teams that doesn't let different domains access. You can come in as a guest, but file sharing all of those different things. Uh, but I just wanted to show you a couple different spaces where collaboration uh, can can be happening and and one of the things that I, I find interesting about collaboration is that a lot of times when we think about collaboration we think about these big projects collaboration especially in the online environment is really about how can i help someone else and myself as well advance forward and this could be as simple as uh, being in, in a specific channel i have a channel in my, my uh, creativity and business innovation course uh, called research feedback and advice and so what i would create as far as collaboration making everybody be better is giving the instruction for students to share the research that they've come up with and then request feedback and in the feedback loop you have to contribute some sort of constructive feedback you then have to respond to that feedback in some way that you're going to implement that feedback and then check in with that person or that group of people at a later date, but in line in the thread. So you can create channels in teams to be super specific. So you have a general chat, right? You have general conversation, but your specific channels are going to let people collaborate in very different ways. So it's not about like let's open up a you know let's open up a a OneNote a notebook or a, a PowerPoint presentation and let's all work live at the same time. Although we are, we're doing that, we we just did it just a few minutes ago. Uh, and if you weren't able to get into that um, into that co collaborative document, uh, I'll share the link in just a moment. The other thing that I have found to be really powerful, I haven't implemented them yet, but I'm going to use the experience of, of the breakout rooms in Zoom, but actually better. The, the, I love Zoom, I use Zoom. I was using Zoom for distance mentoring and for, for meetings for three, four years now. I love Zoom. The problem with Zoom is you use Zoom and then it's gone. Maybe you remember to download the chat transcript, but you share things. And I saw this in my own classroom, it's very challenging. You share things and then they're lost they're lost in the zoom you could create a collaboration room where students can have conversations here they can share different resources they can work on a task together and then they can also meet you can also set up a meeting in that channel so you could have multiple meetings happening in the channel with your different students so it's not just one meeting happening at once. So that's a way to sort of run those, those breakout rooms in a way that I think is, is pretty awesome. So that is sort of you know ways to collaborate in Teams. I like Teams. I think Teams has a lot of potential. I'm porting my entire class over into Teams in the, in, in, in the fall. I dabbled a little bit with Teams. I'm, I was actually using Slack before I realized how powerfully integrated Teams is especially with the video. Slack, I think, is getting video, but they're a little bit late to the game. Now, with PowerPoint, okay, let me get into a couple people not in, in, the, in there, if you have a... Yeah, so, don't get me wrong, Zoom, breakout rooms, super quick, super awesome. You make the random breakout rooms, they go in. One of the problems with the breakout rooms is you can't assign people to a breakout room. So if you're gonna run you know, three or four breakout rooms in a week on a specific task, it can be kind of frustrating. So with Teams, 
you can have all your students inside the team's environment in that in that class team and you could create collaboration channels where you can assign students okay this week you're in collaboration room one and you can all go in there and you can set up and you can assign people actually to the channel where only a only a set amount of, of students are going to be able to access that specific channel and that is going to let you and it's okay like they're in the chat and they're and they're they're having conversations in the chat and they're sharing things and then next week they're in a different um you know a different channel it's not so important the channel conversations it's it's about the goals that are clearly set out for them to achieve in the channel so i just think that that i think that that's you know just something that's that's super super awesome super rad so I'm going to share a couple lesson ideas right now for PowerPoint because I I re fell in love. I can't even say that. I don't think I ever loved PowerPoint. And this is on recording, but I got to be transparent. I've never loved PowerPoint. I am in love with the unique components of PowerPoint that are incredibly valuable at becoming better presenters creating better presentation material, and then also really ab about accessibility for students that are deaf or hard of hearing or students that English is their second language and you have live subtitles on the screen. I remember being at a conference in, um, in Monterrey, Mexico. And I, I, don't, I don't want to call it Monterey because Monterey is up north for me. I'm based out of Los Angeles, Monterrey. Awesome, awesome place. But I'm presenting and I I don't speak Spanish. I'm speaking English. They have headphones on. I don't even know if they actually hear me through the through the through the PA, but there's a guy sitting in the corner in the soundproof box and he's live translating for me. Imagine if I had PowerPoint at that point in time and I could have live subtitles on right under my slides on the giant screen in the background as I'm sharing. Live translation subtitles. It's absolutely crazy. It's it's crazy. So with that said, I'm thinking now, well, I'm not always going to use PowerPoint. That, that's just me personally. And I think that being honest is, is one of the things I strive to do. But I find myself using PowerPoint more because of these extra things that Google and Keynote do not have. I know that there's, I know there's live subtitles with, with Google Slides, but the other components, Presentation Coach, they don't have that. One of the things that can be done in PowerPoint is replicate some of the things that I was doing in Keynote or in Google Slides. So I'm happy to share those right now because I think that those are really exciting, really interesting uh, kind of ways uh, to bring collaboration into, um, into the classroom, into the, for sure, the, 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 um, the, digital environment. I think the digital environment is one of those super important pieces because like we're going to be in this digital environment for quite some time. So you could see here some really awesome ways uh, to collaborate. So this is super nice to see. And the next piece is trying to create an interactive experience. So I've done this a couple times with students. I haven't done it in PowerPoint, but I know it can be done in PowerPoint because I've done it in Google Slides, I've done it in Keynote, I've done it with some Adobe software, which is trying to create an app experience, trying to create something that people can interact with. Uh, and I want to share, I'm going to share my, share this screen here. One of the things that bothers me is when I, when I share my screen, it minimizes the like the, the the meeting that we're in i don't know why it does that <laughs> it's really annoying okay so let me just open this this adobe xd because this was created in adobe xd i've created things like this in keynote you could create it in powerpoint i think that that's something uh, that's super awesome to just explore so i created this framework for my innovation 
framework. I created this, this uh, app prototype for my innovation framework. And you could create this in PowerPoint. And I actually created this framework here, but let me just show you like what is what's already been done and then I'll talk to you about what's possible. So you hyperlink, you link together visual elements that get someone to navigate through and learn from you, to learn about what it is that you wanna share or create an experience. And with my innovation framework for my entrepreneurship program, so I've created this app to present this and it could have been, a, it could have been in a, a Word doc, it could have been a presentation, but I wanted to create an experience that they could walk through and kind of mimic something that I might have them aspire to create. So you go through the first phase is identifying, right? And it's just text at that, at that point. You're like, well, okay, you know, maybe you want, you want something more and you might get through and start to see that there's other ways to bring in elements so that you can learn from those different components. And then as you start to get more and more and more, what I love about PowerPoint is that in addition to the interactivity, you can add audio, you can add video, you can add, you can use the icons that I just love. I love this icon library. It is super duper awesome that you're able um, to find different elements, uh, different visuals to present information. But basically students go through this process of creating apps. So I have students in my, in my startup, you know, focused entrepreneurship uh, class, you know, they're, they're trying to create startups, they're trying to create apps. I've had students use the design thinking process to share information uh, with an audience that they're trying to sh support, to start to interview them using empathy. And then they are able to figure out ways to create an app that solves a problem in the context of the classroom learning. So it's an English class, it's a religious studies class, it's a science class, whatever it is, they have to go through that process of creating an experience that they can, they can run through this in, in created in, in PowerPoint and then someone else can interact with it. So if you have students that are struggling to, you know, freshman biology, understand the parts of a cell. Well, what if students could create interactive content that's for students by students to then teach their peers so that they can be better supported. It also offsets this need to rely exclusively on the teacher, right? So I think that is something that is super awesome. And, you know, I have a whole session dedicated to this experience, but it's really, the interactive experiences in PowerPoint are really focused on teachers creating content that's interactive for the students. And then at some point, the students would then create. How do you have students collaborating though in that space so that they could create these interactive experiences like this one here that they could be working together and then being able to create that interactive experience, something like this, where students are working together, they're live collaborating inside the document, contributing and adding the content together. It's just something that is nice. And then it's also, you know, when we talk about, you know, when we talk about learning, um, you actually, you don't even see that. That's funny. I'm sharing this screen. Man, I don't know how, how long have I been? I love that. Hold on. I'm sharing the screen. That sounds like a while. Thank you. Please let me, if I'm talking about something, 
I have like 15, this is like my style, I'm all over the place. I have like 15 different resources open because they can't all fit in one presentation. If I'm talking and you're like, he's talking, and it sounds like he's talking about something and it's showing you something else, please be like, hey, Rabbi, what are you talking about on the screen? I don't see it. Anyway, awesome. <laughs> okay, that's super funny and not funny. Okay, let me just um, show you the context. So here's an interactive app that's created. And in this interactive app, you can have someone navigate through and they can learn from this. And you know, I already, I already spoke about it, so I'm not gonna speak about it again, but just showing you, you know, the different elements that are that's possible. So this can be created similarly in PowerPoint. You could have multiple students in here and they could be creating these interactive experiences, but they could be collaborating in them. They could be working together in them. I think that that's something that is super important. And you could do the same thing in PowerPoint with this uh, app-like experience. And yeah, I already spoke about it. I just needed to show you because it's not my first rodeo, but it's also not the first time I've spoken for like eight minutes about something that's not even on the screen. So now the next, the next piece is OneNote, right? So just to summarize, the, the PowerPoint, you could have students creating app experiences to present information or to represent the learning that's happening, that they're applying the learning into creating an app experience. But one of the things that I, that I, was, that I was saying until I realized I wasn't actually sharing the screen that I thought I was sharing is there's synchronous learning. Okay, we're all like, we're in a lecture, take notes, follow, keep up the pace. This is what we're doing. It's really, it's not engaging, it is difficult, and your students are just gonna disconnect. And they're gonna pull out one of these, or they're gonna be playing video games. And even if you make them have their screen on, their video on uh, for credit, if you have 15, 20, 30 students in a class, they'll just like add a video or a, or a picture of themselves and like go play, you know, Xbox. I mean, it's, you can't do that synchronous type learning anymore when we're talking about virtu uh, virtual, when we're talking about remote, the, the, the synchronous has to be broken up. So you could have class and you could pause the video and say, okay, everybody, get into your collaborative PowerPoint with your group. Maybe there's you know one or two. You could have a whole class PowerPoint, but you can see the students inside the document. You can see them creating. And I think that that is something that allows you as the, as the teacher to monitor and to support. And I think that that's an important piece where it doesn't have to be you in the class in a video conference speaking to them and then delineating tasks and, and dividing up and, and, and setting the task expectation. It doesn't have to be like that. It could be something that's done you know, throughout the day and that you're checking in with them and that there is a check-in system. But there's just ways to explore that I think are a little bit more focused on students creating and not just being passive recipients to learning. Okay, so the next the next one is OneNote. And I, I really like OneNote. So I'm going to share with you this OneNote doc right here. We're going to collaborate in the OneNote. Someone was like, yeah, I wish we could create something right now. Well, you're in luck. Because here's the OneNote. So hopefully people can get into this OneNote. And what I love about OneNote is that OneNote is a place that you can contribute content to. So you could have students, they could be working in the OneNote, they could be working somewhere else and they could share their documents. They could share their wakelets. They could share, um, you know, or you could share a Flipgrid where they shared. The point is that collaboration isn't just about working on a specific project. It's about being able to advance and, and, and support one another in a learning process. So let me know if you can get into this OneNote.
I mean, I'm hoping it's like PowerPoint where I just see people pop in. All right, so people are in. Awesome, okay, so one of the things that I have seen to be successful is you sort of create three, la three layers of OneNote content creation or and, and then collaboration is part of that. So the first is a brainstorming space. So you could have you could you could set up these tabs however however way you like. They could be you know they're they're meant to be sections. Maybe they're units. Maybe they're lessons. You know you can create many notebooks. So this could be like a place you know a, a collaborative space for your students to work in. So the first phase is that brainstorming. You usually want to get students um, students being able to contribute. I think that expectation, if they know that they need to contribute, but they don't know when they're gonna need to contribute, that keeps them on their toes. And I actually, I heard from a parent uh, at the school that I work at, that one of their, uh, the, the, his, his son's favorite teacher, he said, she didn't speak for more than five minutes. And he never knew when he was going to, be called on or asked that it's his turn to contribute right there and that everyone would see that contribution or that the teacher would see it. And I had I had his son in my class and he definitely wasn't as engaged. And I was thinking like, wow, five minutes. Like I was doing more like, you know, 10 and 10. But I, I guess five minutes, you can get a lot out of that five minute process. So I want you to share types of collaboration that are that's possible with remote learning. Right. But I want you to share your thoughts, not just in text, but can you add photo? Can you add video? Can you add drawing? Can you find sources? Can you find resources? Because the brainstorming isn't just about you and your thoughts. It's like, what can you find out in the world and how can you add it into this doc? So I added a couple different things in here, you know, uh, some text, some some pictures, and I'm going to also add some other things as well. When you go to the insert, so you're able to add a bunch of different things, but I love, I love that when you paste, when you paste in, like here, let me do this real quick. Or actually, I can show you, I could show you up here. So in this tab here, you can embed a wakelet right, like right into it. And so students can actually be creating their own Wakelet collections and then sharing those collections. It's just something that I think is super effective at like containing different content and having students and, and yourself share as well the different content. It just, I don't know, I just, I like it. I don't know if I, don't know if I have anything better to say on that. I just think it's cool and it works and students are, uh, able to integrate multiple types of of media content. So I don't I don't know if if we're able to actually type, but if someone could just type in here, so like I know people are in here. I think someone's trying to type. Maybe. No. Anyone can type or put in the chat that you can't type? Hey, Rabbi, I don't know where to type. Maybe oh, I'm in the wrong thing. Yeah, go into the go into the brainstorm, like go into where I'm at. Or maybe maybe you guys are somewhere else. But you could just like literally click here and then you could actually move this. Um, it's an infinity canvas, in theory at least. 
and you could actually like type anywhere and like move it around, right? So one, one of the cool things, I wish you could insert um, shapes, right? Like you could do symbols and stuff um, and you could like draw. Cause I, I thought about like, you know, I could create, um, like I wanted to create a Venn diagram, you know, but like, this is like a huge pain to do. So then I was like, oh, I'll just create it in, um, I'll just create it in, um, in PowerPoint. So we, we added in the, we added in some collaboration ideas in, uh, in the PowerPoint and you're able to, you know, also mimic this process in um, in OneNote. What I like about OneNote that's a little bit different than the than the um, than doing it in PowerPoint. So PowerPoint, you know, it works. You can do the post-its. It's really nice. You can even build that up. The, the the point of the brainstorm in that space, instead of just like in the chat or you know um, you know audio in in the in the Teams video call, is that you can archive it, right? That it, that it has, you know, if it has purpose, it can be utilized later, it can be built upon. So with OneNote, you can really start to build on that. And you could actually add those, if you wanna do just like one slide brainstorms around a certain context or a few slide brainstorms, you could actually insert that file, which I think I have downloaded, hold on. Oh, I don't. So then what I would do is I would actually have to share the link. Oh, I already did it actually. <laughs> and then put it in here. So you can have access to that. But there's just more, I think there's more building potential in, uh, in a Microsoft uh, OneNote environment than it is for the PowerPoint. I think PowerPoint is more, I appreciate it more for building projects, but I, I, I like the, the post-it brainstorming, even though there, there are other solutions that you could do that with, okay? Now, lesson ideas, okay? So someone had mentioned in the chat, you know, OneNote is a little bit confusing. So I, I think that it, there's a, a, little, a little learning curve with it, the the way that I have found it um, to be successful is that you want to you want to use it for its purpose, which is to be organized. So you start with your sections, okay? Like let me let me share with you uh, one that's like actually built out, and that might. Um, give you a little bit more more context okay so with my entrepreneurship course so i have these different phases that they learn through the first semester and then the second semester is all about implementation uh, or like full-scale implementation so each one of these has a different um, focus and in that focus i have a method of bringing in different content. It's not very collaborative yet, but I'm able to bring in resources. I have discussion questions, and then I have the, um, I can embed things like a, like a form uh, to check for understanding. Uh, I can embed, you know, I, I can bring in pictures, right? In, in you know, videos, Flipgrid. And I, I have a whole session on, on, on OneNote and like the, the potential with that. But then as I start to add onto this, I would add like a lesson section with activities or not, it wouldn't be a lesson section, it would be an activity section. That activity section could have students actually contributing and I, it would be built in a way where I can, I can uh, sort of archive that student contribution and keep the, the lesson in, you know, or the structure intact. But you can then start to build all these different sub, um, sub pages. So identify, so you have activities, 
to support that identify, uh, identify phase of the process. And then evidence of success or evidence of learning. And you could then have the students uh, creating content in that area that shows that they were successful. So they could, it could be a place where they, um, they're, they're, they're adding content you know, as, a, as a document, it could be a video, it could be a resource, however, however they go about it. But there's definitely um, some really awesome ways uh, to, to start using to start using OneNote. Um, uh, not that one. This one. So the lesson ideas, right? You, you, we could we could be brainstorming in in there in this section right here, and then your your evidence of of learning, right? So some of the things that I was thinking about is like, okay, so yeah, students could create apps, they could work on on projects. I had students create an interactive book using Book Creator. I think that some of the, those features could be done in PowerPoint because you can add uh, so many awesome multimedia components to it, uh, including on the desktop version, hyperlinking slides. If someone wants to show me how to hyperlink slides on the web version, please, could not, could not find it. It's driving me crazy. You can hyperlink text, but you can't, to, or, or, um, you can hyperlink out to a website, but you can't hyperlink into a um, into another slide. So I don't know that was just something that I was a little bit like a little bit confused. But then I thought about, well, what if students could crowdsource a OneNote notebook where they are using you know multiple types of media besides text? They're creating you know maybe not a full class, but you could do group crowdsourcing of notes. And then one of the things that I thought was really cool. I had students using Adobe Spark for this, but I could definitely see the creative power of working in um, working in, in PowerPoint. Is the the icon library is so powerful that you could actually have students creating really striking graphics in PowerPoint, which is a weird sentence to be saying. So when I think about ways that collaboration can be supported by Microsoft tools, I'm wondering, well, how could students create a PSA, public service announcement, an infographic, something that showcases the, their learning in just an interesting way. So, you know, if you, you could have students creating timelines, you could have students creating just really cool, interesting ways. I, I think that the collaboration process with, you know, Microsoft tools, but from a pedagogical standpoint, when students become part of the learning process, when students can create content, it creates a different type of environment where students feel like there's there's choice, they feel like they have a voice, they feel like that they're part of a process. But I think one of the more compelling reasons to, to support collaboration is when they know that the destination for their work is not just a grade book that other people are interacting with their content, maybe even outside of the classroom. Maybe there are other students in the school that are interacting with their content and vice versa. Maybe they're collaborating on a Teams call with other students, or maybe you're bringing in a professional as a guest to collaborate with students and to brainstorm with students and to be part of that learning process. We have, a leadership seminar at our school for uh, for juniors and they are all in person so our talent pool is quite limited <laughs> it's limited to people at an hour so it was like six period right like not even on the lunch hour in los angeles who can come visit but it's a successful program so when it went virtual the the talent pool expanded, and they were also more flexible with the uh, with the timing, so that more people were available, and it just became something that was super amazing. Excuse me. So, and I hope I'm not boring you. If I'm if I'm yawning, I'm I'm boring myself. I hope not. But <laughs> late late night, early morning. So the 
the potential for, for video as well is, is definitely conducive for collaborative practice where you can bring in others. I've had, I've had startup uh, you know, founders come in and collaborate with students, and that can happen in that can happen virtually, where it, they're not just presenting, but they're actually having students work on um, some of the components of the of the startup to learn about. One of one of the examples was AI. He, he has an AI startup, and the students were working through the process of of improving the AI algorithm, and it just became, a, I think, a really cool, memorable type experience. So you have, you have this ability, you know, for students to create projects, for students to create processes where they're not just building together, they are learning together, they're thinking, they're brainstorming together. You know, you have a series of guiding questions and the, the teacher um, creates and then the students consume and that can be fine. But if they're sharing together, if they're learning together, it becomes just a different environment. And it also requires, if, if, they just, if they don't know when they are going to be called on, if they don't know when they're gonna be expected to contribute, because like things are just moving at a rapid pace, things are changing and we're talking about this and then, and then we're asking that and then you have to create this and then what are your thoughts? And then you have to think pair share and then, Right. There's no time for the student to, to be able to slip away, either mentally or physically. So I think that's, um, you know, those are just some strategies as well. One of the things that I wanted to share, it's connected to my, my dedicated OneNote session where we actually go through the process of building um, a OneNote um, you know, a OneNote notebook and then one that, that supports collaboration and, and, and student contribution is how how are you able to go through this process of introducing content and and sharing resources to give them a, a broader or a deeper understanding and to guide them through the process where then they have to contribute and then present or share or fulfill some sort of activity you can do that all in one note which I didn't know and I thought it was like totally crazy. So that's um, that's sort of just the collaborative brainstorm. You know, there this was this was not meant to be like a deep dive. This was more of like a broad kind of conversation. I have other sessions that we go specifically into the different activities, like how do you build an interactive experience so that you could present to your students? How then could you have your students creating together an interactive experience that showcases learning. You're teaching them how to present information. You're teaching them a sort of app prototype skill. But all of these sort of principles are part of building that creative confidence, building that creative capacity. So I wrote a book about it. I share the ideas, I share the insights, I share the stories, and then there's activities at the end of each section. So when we have a conversation about collaboration, it's not just about working together nicely. It's about giving students a voice, giving students the freedom to create and present information in a way that taps into what they're passionate about. So that is something that I think students resonate with. And uh, as someone mentioned in the chat, I think it was, uh, was Melody, um, I'm starting this week on Wednesday. We are announcing a um, the winners of uh, of our book study. So actually, I'm going to drop that in the chat. Um, if you have the book, if you don't have the book, if you're interested in being part of uh, the book study, so far we have 40 educators. I'm sorry, 41 educators that are interested in being part of the book study. The book study is going to uh, have a, a really cool study guide that was crowdsourced by educators last summer. So there's going to be that collaborative process of going through the book. It's going to be focused on the creative capacity of not just you, but your students as well. But there's going to be either we'll do like a Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting. But 
times where we'll have a chance to brainstorm together with with myself. And there's also some really incredible, incredible educators that are um, that are in uh, the Facebook group. So I just want to I'm going to share the link if you want to subscribe to the newsletter. That's where the resources happen. But the Facebook group, the Facebook group is where it's at. And I'm going to share that in the chat as well. And then these sessions are all recorded. These sessions are um, available on Q's YouTube channel. And there's a lot of other awesome educators. Uh, I have about five more minutes. And what I wanna do in the last five minutes is just a little bit of a Q&A. If you wanna ask some questions in the, in the chat, or if you wanna share like, you know, this is like, here's a, here's a, a topic I need to cover. How would you collaborate uh, there? Um, I'm happy to a answer and, and support and, and help us all figure out, you know, what's possible. You could also turn on your, your microphone. I believe you have that permission and you know ask it and if we don't have any questions then uh, we'll be finished for the day the facebook group appears locked that's interesting That is weird. Let's try that again. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for attending. And unless there are any more questions, uh, stay tuned, I believe for next week, when I'm gonna be talking about some of the creative power of Microsoft tools. We're actually gonna dig into the Paint app and start using that, which is it's a crazy thing to imagine that there would be like a session on Paint. Uh, but yeah, Microsoft Paint is not the Paint I grew up with in the, uh, you know, the late 90s. MS Paint, that was, uh, that was, yeah. So anyway, thank you all for, for attending and, uh, Connect on social, and we'll uh, we'll be in touch. Hopefully, you join the Facebook group. Be well, everybody. Thanks, Rabbi. You did.